Now we're going to talk about Coulomb's law, which is an equation which describes the electrostatic force. If you have two charged objects, say you have a positively charged object and a negatively charged object, they're going to attract each other because opposite charges attract. So this force F will be exerted on each charge. And if they were like charges, they would repel. But the point is they exert a force on each other. And that force is called the electrostatic force. That's the name given to the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges. And it was Charles Coulomb. He was a French scientist from the late 1700s who studied these forces and produced an equation to describe them. And in order, in order to study these, Coulomb came up with a way to measure an extremely small force, an extremely small electrostatic force, and, and here's what he did. Imagine hanging from the ceiling a thin wire with a pole balanced here, and he had an object on each end of the pole, and he would charge up one of these objects. So let's just suppose this object over here were charged positively. And then he would put another object nearby that was charged, let's say, negatively. And because this pole here is suspended on the wire, it can rotate, it can twist, this charge can swing around. And as the force of attraction between these charges pulls on this one, that causes this, this pole here to rotate, this wire to twist a little bit, and based on the amount of twist in the wire, he could tell how much force there was right there. Now you might recognize this experimental setup as very similar to that done by Cavendish to determine the gravitational force. Henry Cavendish came up with a, this, this idea essentially, this apparatus for measuring extremely small forces, a very sensitive apparatus, and used it to measure the strength of the gravitational force. Coulomb essentially applied the same same type of apparatus, or used the same type of apparatus, applied the same ideas to study the strength of the electrostatic force. And the equation he came up with was this. Suppose these two charges, and um, we'll put the force F on each of them there. Suppose the two charges are called uh, Q1 and Q2. So we're using Q for charge. Think, think of Q as standing for quantity, the quantity of charge. And suppose the distance between these forces here, between these charges, suppose the distance between them there, we'll call it R. So they're a distance R apart. Then the electrostatic force is given by this equation. Some K times the product of the charges divided by R squared. So the force is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And not only is this experiment similar to Cavendish's experiment with gravity, but the, uh, the equation is very, very similar to the equation for gravity. You remember the equation for gravity. It's big G times M1 times M2 over R squared. And just as gravity depends on the size of the masses and on the distance between them, as well as this gravitational constant, the electrostatic force depends on the size of the charges and the distance between them and this constant here which we call the electrostatic constant. And it's worth noting that both of these, you see this R squared down in the denominator, both of these equations are inverse square laws. Okay, now a couple of things about this equation. Um, one, note that Q is used to stand for charge. And, and again, think of Q as standing for quantity. Unfortunately, Q also stands for heat, as in quantity of heat. There are equations in physics that deal with heat that use Q also. But it's usually pretty clear from the context which is intended, whether you're talking about charge or heat. And um, capital Q or lowercase q could be used for charge. So um, you'll see both of those in a variety of textbooks or, or articles on, on, the, on these topics. And then also this k, I'll tell you what this is. k is a known number, it's a value, and it's 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Now, a, a, couple of, a couple of differences here between the gravitational equation and the electrostatic equation. 
First, gravity only acts on masses, and the electrostatic force only acts on charges. Second, note that the electrostatic force is much, much stronger. This number k is a lot bigger than the constant for the gravitational equation. Remember the constant g was 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And this negative 11, what that means is that g is equal to point zero zero. There's 10 zeros here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's there's 10 zeros and then 667. That negative exponent uh, doesn't mean a negative number, it means a really small number. So g, the gravitational constant, is a very tiny number. Whereas k here, you see k is 9 billion. So the electrical forces in general are much, much stronger than the gravitational forces. And, and you might wonder if electricity is so much stronger than gravity, and why don't I feel electrical forces. I feel gravitational forces all the time. Why don't I feel electrical forces if they are so much stronger? And the, and the answer is you feel gravitational forces because you exist, you spend your life right next to a very large mass, the Earth. And in the presence of such a large mass, you feel a gravitational force. Uh, electrically though, most of the things around us are uncharged. They all have charges in them, protons and electrons, but most of the things we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis are electric, electrically neutral. They have approximately the same number of protons and electrons. So the, the things that we encounter have no charge, or pretty close to no charge, so we don't feel any electrostatic force. And we are basically electrically neutral. Right now, you have approximately the same number of electrons as protons. If you rub your feet on the carpet, you can build up a little bit of static charge. But for the most part, most of the time, you're electrically neutral, and so are the things around you. So there's no electro electrostatic force between you and the things around you. But mass, on the other hand, everything around us has mass, and you have mass, and you're right next to this very large mass that's attracting all the things around us, and that is the Earth. So that's why we feel gravity on a regular basis, but we don't feel the electrostatic charges or the electrostatic forces. Okay, one other difference between gravity and electricity or the gravitational force and the electrostatic force is that the electrostatic force can attract or repel depending on whether the charges are different or whether they are alike. Gravity, on the other hand, always attracts. So gravity only works as if the masses are positive. But with the electrostatic force, the charge can be positive or negative, and we can end up having forces that attract or repel. Also note that these charges here in this equation, Q1 and Q2, are measured in coulombs, and one coulomb is a lot of charge. We don't typically encounter static charges of that size. When working with static electricity, it's common to find charges measured in millicoulombs, which would be thousandths of a coulomb, or microcoulombs, which would be, be millionths of a coulomb. So we'll, um, we'll come, come back in the next video and do a couple of examples with this equation.